video gives a brief overview of the proper method of cleaning a Rudolf polarimeter cell. This video is relevant to the 40T cells. These are the cells that are supplied with an Autopol 4 Temptrol, an Autopol 5, a 5 Plus and an Autopol 6. It's also relevant to the 32 series cell. These are the low volume cells that are supplied with the Autopol 3. Before starting the process, suitable solvents need to be selected. Often that two solvents are used, one that will remove the sample and another will remove the first solvent. Since this cell had sucrose in it, I'm going to use water and acetone. After cleaning the cell, we need to dry it. In a laboratory, this often means drying it with online compressed air or compressed nitrogen. However, for this video, I'm going to use canned compressed air. First, I'll fill the syringe with the first solvent, and then I'll inject this into the cell. I'm pushing the solvent through there to wash out any, any traces of the sample. Back and forward, perhaps, just to create a little cleaning action. And out it comes. You may wish to do this two or three times, depending on how sticky the sample is. Now, I'll push the water out using the compressed air. The next step is the acetone. The acetone in this case is not really acting as a cleaning solvent, it's simply to displace the water and make the cell easier to dry. Suck the acetone in and push through with the acetone absorbing any moisture. And finally, dry the cell completely using the air. As a final step, I'll check that the cell is dry just by holding it up to the light and looking down ensuring there's no bubbles or anything left on the inner walls of the cell. Under normal circumstances, the cleaning I have done should be enough. I've left the cell intact, but this is because of Rudolph's special cell design. The cell is a double annulus whereby water coming in is directed from the center to the outer part of the cell where it washes the glass window then back down the center of the cell again. This section shows how to pull the cell apart and provide a thorough cleaning if the simple cleaning from the previous section does not suffice. Start by removing the ends of the cell using the Allen driver. The end of the cell will come up. We can also remove this end of the cell using an identical procedure. We remove the ends of the cell using the Allen driver or something similar. We now have three wetted parts both ends and the centre of the cell. This can be washed in a laboratory washer or an ultrasonic bath. It can be dried either just by left on the sink or in a laboratory drying device. When reassembling the cell, the key is to put things back in the same order they came out. In particular, the cushion must be placed into the end first and then the glass window placed above the cushion. If this is reversed, if the glass window is placed first, then the cushion, there will be poor reproducibility as the pressure on the end of the cell will change the cell length. Reassembly of the ends is the same process as disassembly was at the start. It's important to remember that the ends will only go one way. The curved part on the end has to match with the inlet port on the cell. Place them over the end and then tighten with the Allen driver. It's important to remember that you're tightening a glass washer and there's no need to push down hard, finger tight is enough. The cell's now clean, ready to be used again.